We're live. What's going on? We'll give people a couple couple seconds to join. It looks like Amber threw us a heart already. Definitely appreciate it. It's notification on my watch that we're live. I'm sure my phone's buzzing somewhere. Fancy technology. All right. Well, let's get started. Yeah. Rise and Grind, episode 11. Busting in. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the quote unquote white belt mindset. Um, and that's not going to mean a lot to a lot of people. Who no, are, it doesn't. I don't who, think it does uh, at all. Who are white belts or haven't done martial arts before, but you mm-hmm. just want to take a moment to talk about um, what the white belt mindset is. Yeah. I mean, white belt mindset, uh, it, it, it's a, it's a learning mindset, right? You're coming into a new experience. Um, you're lowest on the bottom or at the totem pole. You, uh, don't, you don't know a whole lot, but you have the potential to know a whole lot. And I think the difference between, um, like a white belt and what, uh, Mr. Crater would call like a clear belt is that you've made the decision to tie that belt on your waist. I've never heard him call anything a clear belt. A clear belt. A clear belt. Like someone comes off the street, they're a clear belt. But then you tie on that belt, you put on your gi, you sit on the mat with humility and, uh, respect for the process. And you go in there and you learn. Um, and I think that's a mentality that, uh, while learning a new skill or, you know, trying to accomplish some of your goals, which very well may be acquiring new skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now I, I see this most predominantly, I think, you know, when a, when a wrestler or another person who's experienced in grappling martial arts comes to try a jujitsu class, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, we get wrestlers who come in all the time and, you know, a lot of times the best wrestlers, the best jujitsu players that we end up having at the academy are wrestlers who are able to adopt the white belt mindset. Mm-hmm. And even though that they knew a lot of grappling and their grappling is going to help their jujitsu. Okay. They really understood that there was a lot of jujitsu still to learn, right? Mm-hmm. So they could put what they knew in the back seat adopt what we were teaching mm-hmm. and then once they kind of knew what we were teaching where we were getting they can bring back their previous experiences and they would just be that much stronger of a grappler right yeah definitely on the co- on the contrast side of that is you know the people who come in and they think that they know it all and they think they're, that they're going to be good at something right away Traditional martial arts. yeah and sometimes they are good at it right away yeah but you know and a couple of weeks or a couple of months, whatever it may be, they don't progress at all, right? Mm-hmm. And then everyone starts figuring them out. And because they didn't adopt that, you know, this is a new thing to me. I should be working on learning, not mm-hmm. just using what I know, right? Then they get discouraged and then they leave. Oh, yeah, definitely. And they have that kind of preconceived notion. Or you, it, It's easy to have a preconceived yeah. notion where I'm already good at this thing. So I'm good at wrestling. I should come in and I'm going to be good at jujitsu. Yeah, for like, sure. It just makes sense, right? Um, and that's, that they're of, coming in with a full cup. It's that bit of ego that yes. kind of comes into play. And I think that's why a lot of times in jujitsu, they say, leave your ego at the door, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to be able to do that when you go into some sort of new unknown experience. Yeah. Go in there open-minded, ready to learn, ready to accept, uh, and, and, and humility, the ability to say, oh, I don't know this at all, and I don't have to, I don't have to. Like, it's okay for me to be new at this. It's okay for me not to be very good at this. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of room to grow. Um, I'm doing and- Fiddlehead's product placement right now. Fiddlehead's Coffee, new in Grafton. Check them it's out. Pretty good. They're very awesome. good. Um, but why is it important? Why is it important to have these things, Perry? What, what, what is a, uh, what's, you're the you're the, the 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 gym owner and the head instructor here at Neutral Ground, um, so you've seen more brand new white belts than anybody else here. I'm sure. I have seen a lot of brand new white belts. What's the difference belts, between right? some of the guys who are still around now, ten years later, and all the probably yeah, hundreds it, of people that you've seen leave? Especially the ones who you know progress really fast. It's all about just being open right Mm -hmm. yeah we talk about open mindset but like be a sponge and use your previous experiences to help you along your path right asking questions Mm -hmm. i think is one of the best things that anyone can do right just speaking up or even sharing uh call them ahas like Mm -hmm. you don't always have to ask questions you know sometimes it really helps instructors or teachers when you share when something clicks Right. And that will help the instructor know so they can make it click again for you in the future. Yeah. 
Um, I, I really think that's what's most important about this. It, it really allows someone to learn and develop as a human being. And, you know, this isn't just martial arts either, right? Mm-hmm. This is something that you can take this mindset into um, a ton of areas of your life, anyway. right? This is super similar. It's actually a part of the growth mindset. Right? How can you continuously develop as a human being to better yourself and get to that next level? Absolutely. Right. Um, when I learn a new role or some new skill comes out in my day job with like web development, like right, the, the web stuff changes all the time. Mm-hmm. Like if I didn't have a white belt mindset when technology changes, I would not have a job. Yeah. <laughs> Outside of the dojo, right? <laughs> Same thing with jujitsu. Like yeah. It, Squid Guard came the, out. The meta changes constantly <laughs> yeah, in yeah, jiu-jitsu. Like, I need um, to have a white ball mindset for jiu-jitsu because everything, all, all the game changes, new techniques come out, not new old techniques come back. Yeah, like, definitely. It just needs to be consistent that I need to keep an open mind of like, you know, my jiu-jitsu and my skills aren't the be-all of jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. Like, there's more out there. There's a ton out there. Um, and I think that like... Uh, Previous associated failure could definitely be help fill your cup when you're trying to go into something. If you've screwed up at something before, that's going to be in your cup for a long time. I oh. feel like that. Like correlating events that shouldn't necessarily yeah. be correlated. So let, let's explain that cup. So you are you are the cup, right? You're the cup. Uh, all of your experiences help fill that cup. Um, when you're going to learn a new skill or you're getting into a new um, experience for your life, the the more full your cup is, the the less room you have to accept new knowledge and accept new things into that. So you kind of have to empty it when going into a new a new experience. Let it fill, and then you can like come back and put that together, like you were talking about before, letting it kind of flow into what you're doing. I prefer to just get a larger cup. Larger cup. I think that's what Sophia said to me. Either she's like, I don't like this whole cup thing. Maybe because I, I like my cup. Maybe I just need to like upgrade like, it. My cup's got a lot of good shit extended in it. it. I need one of those big gulp ones from uh, like Speedway. Yeah, the 128 ounce mugs. So, how would you connect a growth mindset to a learning mindset? Are they the same thing, or are they? I don't know if they're necessarily the same, but I think the learning mindset is really important to develop your growth mindset and to develop growth, right? Okay. You know, if you can't go into these situations where you want to grow as an individual, and especially when we talk about growing as an individual, we get mentors and we get our team and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like if we don't go to our team with a white belt mindset, like you might know more than me about a situation, mm-hmm. then I'm never going to be able to grow as an individual. Right. But I think there's some other things with growth mindset that aren't necessarily, you know, learning mindset, too. OK. Um, both are super important, you know, in your life, though. Definitely. 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 Especially if you're trying to put all the stuff that we've been talking to into action. So, um, so you were just talking to me about you're going out to a seminar, um, Riley Bodycomb. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go Francisco. train with him for a week in San Francisco at uh, Bay Jiu-Jitsu. Right, right, and you've been studying his game extensively. You've yeah. done a seminar with him before, mm-hmm. right? But you're going to go with a growth mindset, like you know, you have a clean slate of what's going to be taught. Mm-hmm. But you have your not previously associated failures. You have your previously associated experiences that yes. you're going to be able to bring up through the seminar. Yeah. Not going to like oh, I know this technique. He's teaching this technique yeah. again, right? You, you're going to let him teach a technique and then be like, oh, yeah, that sh- also showed this in his video and mm-hmm. I have that now, right? Those details come together. Yeah. And that's definitely what's um, – and, yeah, that, uh, I, I'm going out there to learn. That, and that, I think that's what attracted me to Body Comb's work in the first place. Is it's, uh, it's – at least for the American grappler, it's a, it's yeah. a fresh look at things. Um, and I feel like it, it adds a, a slew of new techniques to a game that I thought I understood. Yeah, yeah. Um, and definitely after going there, ready to absorb and to learn and, and try to mm-hmm. bring it back and make the make the grappling community that much better yeah. here in Wisconsin. Yeah, that's awesome. And I just came back from uh, Michael Burnoff's Core Strength Experience Conference in Scottsdale, Arizona, 
which was an incredible experience to me because it was my second time going. Um, and I was part of his leadership team, which was really cool. But I took um, two of our students, Jimmy and Jordan, mm -hmm. obviously you know them. Yeah. Took them to the seminar and they did exactly this, right? They did a previous, uh, you know, little call, yeah. uh, teleconference with him at first. Mm -hmm. So they kind of knew what he was all about. But they went into the conference with literally an open mind, and I made sure that I didn't tell them anything about it, like what I got out of it or mm -hmm. whatever it might have been. So they, right? have any... so they didn't have any preconceptions about what it was going to be. Like that experience should just be whatever their experience was. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, I mean, even by the first night, they're like, glad we went in with the open mind because we got so much mm -hmm. from it. Absolutely. And then by the end, they're just like, ecstatic so, about how much they learned that actually uh, a good a good conversation point now is that you've you've been in this for a little bit um this is a little bit different of a uh this is like mental jujitsu this is uh it's, it's a little it's not martial arts it's mental jiu -jitsu. um but it's definitely a skill that you're honing yeah this communication skill uh how has your mentality on it changed since you walked into it the first time and came into it this last time and then also, I'd love to hear your uh, what it was like watching two people experience this powerful experience for the first time <laughs> that you know personally. So, was the first question? How the, the how, how, is it, how has it changed? Like, yeah, from let's, the first let's, time to yeah, the next let's time. Let's reflect on. Um, so, the first time I took it, like I went in like them, like I, you know, I went there and I had no clue what I was there for. I thought I was there for my business, and you know, I, it did certainly helped that. But I learned that to grow the business, I had to grow as an individual, and I really started working on myself and, you know, things like my own communication, my building relationships, all that sort of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's something I'm still working on. You know, I started this journey, you know, with this group last August. Mm -hmm. So it's still new in my life. Yeah. Uh, going back to it was equally as cool. Right. So I attended the conference already. And, you know, when I was there, not every exercise clicked with what I needed at that point in time. Mm -hmm. The second time going, you know, the ones that clicked for me hit even harder. The ones that I missed hit me really hard. Yeah. It's like, I can find, I finally get this one now, mm -hmm. which is really cool. I also got the opportunity to help out people who were in my spot the first time I went, who've yeah. never been there before. And they also don't know what to expect, but they know that they need some sort of change in their life or they know that they can play their life at a higher level. So I got the opportunity to help those people out, which was amazing, right? One of the best feelings that you can have is helping another individual yeah. succeed and get what they want Definitely. or what they need out of something. Definitely. And watching my two friends do it, it was the exact same thing, right? They, I wasn't really with them during the seminar during the day. You know, I would mm. see them a little bit, but I was in a different group. Yeah. I'd say hi during lunch and whatnot, but... Um, after the seminar, I'd have a little bit of training at the end to recap mm -hmm. on the day and they'd go back to the hotel room and I'd come back in the hotel room and we would just chat about things and it was an awesome experience for them. Yeah. It was really cool. I think, you know, they came out of it with, uh, exactly everything that they needed because they went in with a open mind mm -hmm. to learn. So you kind of feel like a, a blue belt again? Yeah. Like, you know a little bit more than when you first started. I, now I, you have younglings that like look up to you. I, I know enough to be but dangerous. But you still, you know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> no, it's definitely, definitely an awesome experience. And I actually got this shirt from there. Average sucks. Mm -hmm. It's because you're average and you suck. Yeah. No, but, just kidding. <laughs> oh, no, I, no. Uh, uh, but I, I did want to bring up the, the, the blue belt thing again. The blue belt in jujitsu is the next step after white belt. Um, and white belts, I find, are, are much um, – tend to be more comfortable approaching blue belts mm -hmm. um, about skills and techniques because they that, know they know they're better than you, but they don't think you're going to be condescending. Like yeah. they think yeah, there's yeah. something with like purple and brown and black belts. Like, But oh. like, you know, a brand new person who literally has a clean slate or an empty cup, you know, that cup can be filled by anyone who's knowledgeable, right? Yes. You know, and some pe sometimes, you know, even me being a black belt, like – Right, I have a lot of information to give, mm -hmm. but sometimes us higher ranks forget how fresh a white belt is, and we almost give too much. Yeah, where a blue belt, like man, you're just there like a year or two ago, and mm -hmm. you really remember what it was like to be that fresh new person oh, yeah. in a situation that a lot of times a blue belt's value. Right, someone who has intermediate experience can give as much or even more experience than someone who's super experienced because they were just there. Yeah. They know what you're struggling with. They know what you're going through. They're starting to figure out, yeah. you know, they're 
rear end from a hole in the ground. For sure. But yeah, I think that's really the the learning mindset, the white belt mindset, right? Yep. And again, like, like the, the white belt mindset, as opposed to just coming off the street, off the couch, you've made a commitment. You've tied the belt around your waist and you're ready to learn. And I think that's the, how that's going to translate to your goals. Like when you have a goal, that's a skill that you want to learn. Go ahead, tie on your white belt, commit to it and learn. Open up. Awesome. And remember, average sucks. Average sucks. And that is your own average, right? You know, I get a lot of questions about this, but what you do on a day-to-day basis, I know you guys certainly aren't in this group because you're already taking this first step of watching these videos and you're at this point in time in this video where uh, you want to become more than your own average, right? Mm -hmm. And this isn't average sucks. This isn't the average population sucks. This is being your own average and living your life as it is without trying to grow as an individual sucks. Yes, it does. Awesome. Anything else? Like, Sh- share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Tag your friends in this. We would love it. Please leave us a rating on uh, Apple Podcasts or whatever your favorite podcast platform is. Uh, this was episode 11, White Belt Mindset. We will see you next week. Bye, guys.